Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we are going to be going into some practice problems using what we learned in chapter three on Mendelian genetics. So today we're gonna to practice Punnett squares. So monohybrid, dihybrid crosses, how we interpret them. And also we're going to be looking at how we could use branch diagrams instead. All right, so I have this little um, handout here that you can go through and look at the question. So here would be question one. And so I'd recommend pausing this video and trying to do this yourself first or thinking about how you would do it on your own because you won't learn about where you're struggling on these things unless you go through and as I always say, put pen to paper. Um, so here we, we're gonna be going through three problems today. Uh, so these are typical example problems that you could have similar questions on an exam or something like that worded similarly. Uh, so we're gonna go through and fill in the worksheet together. All right, so problem number one, here in cats uh, coat color is black versus gray so when you re read these questions you first want to define your character so here your character is coat color the traits are either black or gray a simple mendelian fashion so black you then define your letters that you're using or how you're going to refer to it so black since it's the dominant one well Actually, we don't know that yet. Uh, let's go through here. So uh, two black cats were bred together. Okay, so two black cats, thinking about how that would work, produce six black kittens and two gray kittens. So if you think about this and you know what we talked about in the lecture, if you breed two black cats and you produce six black and two gray, that tells you black is dominant. Well, so which phenotype is dominant? Black. And you know black is either homozygous dominant or heterozygous which phenotype is recessive then is gray so gray here we, we would do homozygous recessive so again you know this because if you uh, two black cats both black and you get gray you know gray was hiding within the alleles here so because gray was hiding in the alleles what could the genotype be of each parent so this one's kind of, you, you guess, you know, uh, let's say the genotype of each parent, you know, if they're both black, they either got to be this. So say one was this and one was this. So one was heterozygous and one was homozygous dominant. And this was the cross. If you would do the monohybrid cross for this, it wouldn't come out correctly. So if you write out that monohybrid, this would be the result. You would not have any gray offspring. So no gray, you would still have carriers. So you know that's not right. So the genotype of each parent would have to be the heterozygous version. If this was the heterozygous version, now one of these would be the gray version and we get two gray kittens. So you know this one, these two have to be the parents here. Uh, next part here is using a Punnett square, determine the likelihood that an offspring would be homozygous for black fur. So now homozygous for black fur, boom, right there. So, that's, so we already did the Punnett square here. So which one of these are homozygous for black fur? There's a one fourth chance, so one out of four. The likelihood that an offspring would be homozygous for gray fur, also one fourth. So here, next question. So again, you can read the question here. You could pause it and try to work through it yourself. I'm gonna go right into it and start explaining it. So alcaptonuria is a metabolic disorder in which affected persons produce black urine. So a genetic condition here. It is inherited in simple Mendelian fashion. It results from an allele A, so there I defined a variable for you, that is recessive to the allele for normal metabolism A+. So this is, we're using different letters and terminology here to help get us to understand how we can write these differently. So here, recessive is A, and dominant is A plus. So don't, it's not a capital and lowercase letter. Uh, so Sally has normal metabolism. So if Sally has normal metabolism, you know Sally is either, so if we write Sally over here, right now as we're reading this question, Sally has to be either, has to have that A plus. So the second one doesn't matter. But her brother, so brother has the disease. So brother has to be little a little a. You can also draw the slash between these as well. Um, so don't forget that. Uh, we'll see that on the next question, actually. Sally's father has it as well. So father has alcaptonuria. So that's also the recessive version. Mother 
has normal metabolism. Again, A plus A. So here, give the genotypes of Sally and her family. Okay. Now, can we figure out these ones? So we know brother and father both have it. So those ones are easy to fill in first. Now, what are the, you know, Sally and mother? Writing the underscore here isn't a correct answer. We can figure it out. If the, so we know the father is, you know, A, A, well, the recessive form. So the mother, so you could do two monohybrids and kind of guess here. How can the brother have it? That's the key here, looking at the brother. So if the mother is A plus A plus, and you do that Punnett square, all of the children would be a carrier. The brother would be a carrier then and would not have it because the mother would be giving the dominant trait. So the mother would have to be a carrier of it. So then if you do this Punnett square here, you can see what I mean. So here would be A plus, there would be a carrier. Here would have it, carrier, and would have it. So here we know Sally, the daughter, has to be one of these because she doesn't have it. So Sally has to be A plus A, and the mother has to be A plus A as well, or heterozygous. So part two of this question, if Sally's parents have another child, what is the probability that the child will have the disease? And here, we already did the Punnett square. The probability is one half or 50% chance. So you just read the little Punnett square there, or you write this as a ratio, one to one. Okay, next question here. These ones take a little bit more time because they're dihybrid crosses. Uh, so here, one part at a time, uh, you can go through and work through this all. So here, pause on this one right here. So we're talking about some fruit flies here. Um, so first question, if two dihybrids are crossed, what's the phenotypic ratio? Next question, what would be the predicted phenotypic ratio of crossing a fly with long wings and ebony body with that version? And number five here, what is the proportion? So here, you know, pause the video and work through these problems on your own, on your own scratch paper. I'm just gonna go through and start on them now. Okay, so wild fruit flies have Drosophila have long wings, VG plus, and gray bodies, E plus. So now we're using this VG plus and E plus. Because I know we're doing some dihybrid crosses here, I'm gonna change these to plus. Actually, I can't because we're talking about E here. Um, so VG plus and gray bodies, E plus. The recessive forms are then VG and E. So long wings, gray bodies are dominant, vestigial wings or short wings, and ebony bodies are caused by mutations and are recessive. So that's defining our variable. So now here it's a dihybrid cross. If these are crossed, what is the predicted ratio of their offspring? So if you look at, you don't have to do this whole Punnett square, but I will draw it out for you so you can see it. Uh, so if you do this entire cross here, remember if you cross any two dihybrids, you're going to get a 9, 3, 3, 1 ratio if it's Mendelian inheritance. So that's the ratio. So that's just something you learn to know. If you see a dihybrid cross, it's going to, well, a dihybrid heterozygote cross. And that's what this is defined here. So this cross would be VG plus VG. Um, no, and then, so this is, gets tough to write too cross, and that's why you put the slashes in there sometimes, so it's easier to read, because VG is one unit together. And then this is cross, VG plus VG, then E plus E. So this is the same as writing, you know, a dihybrid cross like this one. So, you know, you can substitute and say, you know, A is equal to VG plus, little a is equal to VG, uh, B is equal to E plus and uh, little b is equal to E. If that makes doing the Punnett square easier, I could draw out this Punnett square. Remember you foil uh, for the gametes. So you do uh, first, outsides, insides, last. So if I were to draw out the gametes here again, I'm gonna use uh, the A's and the B's. Just remember the uh, key I wrote up here. So again, these will all be the same here. So here is the setup of the Punnett square. If you notice, each of these would be a separate gamete from each parent. 
Again, I'm using A's and B's instead of the VG pluses because those get very complex and hard to read. And all right, I'm gonna fill in this Punnett square real fast and then we'll be back. All righty, and it is done. So if you were, so just as a note here, keep all of the alleles together for that character. And also get in a habit of writing the dominant form first because it makes it easier to read. So here you have one recessive and one dominant. Don't write it little a, big A. Write it big A, little a. It helps you read it again later. And if you were to go through and read each one of these, you'd have that 9, 3, 3, 1 ratio. Uh, just looking at, remember, the differences here. So it'd have So 9 would have long wings, gray bodies. Then you'd have 3 with long wings, um, ebony bodies. Uh, then you'd have gray bodies, 3 gray bodies, and... Um, short or vestigial wings, and then you have one that has a vestigial wings and ebony body down here. And that's your 9331 ratio if you would go through and look at what the phenotype would be of all of these. Uh, so just this is getting you to see, you know, this, this cross and also make sure you can set this up on your own. Make sure you can write the gametes, uh, define your variables and so forth, because you'll have to set up this cross on your own on any exams you take. All right, next question here. What would be the predicted phenotypic ratio of crossing a fly with long wings and an ebony body? So long wings and an ebony body. Let's think of what that will look like. So long wings, VG plus, and ebony body is recessive. And it tells you homozygous for both traits. So that's VG plus, VG plus, and then recessive. With a gray fly with vestigial wings. Also, both homozygous. So, gray fly, vestigial wings. So, gray, E plus, E plus. And then vestigial wings, uh, VG, VG. So, E plus, E plus, VG. Oh, I, so, VG, VG, E plus, E plus. Write your um, characters in the same order. So, if we write out this cross here, you know, always write your cross. You always get points for writing your cross, well, especially in my courses. Uh, so here's the first part, cross um, this one over here. So the question is now, what would be the predicted phenotypic ratio? So here you would have to do the whole Punnett square. But if you start drawing out the Punnett square, so you do a dihybrid cross, you can also do the branch diagram here, but I wanna use that for number five. Um, so if you look at this and you start drawing out the gametes and let's leave them as, you know, VG plus and E here. So here, all of these will be VG plus E, no matter how you do it. So all of them are going to be the same. And one tip for doing dihybrid crosses on a Punnett square, if any of them are the same in the same column or row, you only have to do one. Um, you can cross the other one out. So VG plus E is the only gamete combination we have. And on the other one, the only gamete combination we are gonna have if you FOIL this is VGE plus. So this is the only square we need to fill in. All of the other ones are the same gametes. So they're gonna have the same combination. So here, the final answer will be VG plus VG E plus E. There's your answer. So what is the predicted phenotypic ratio? It's just one. <laughs> All flies will be, well, for the phenotype here, they will all have long wings and gray body. So all long wings, gray body. So just again, if you can see the gametes and how they write out, uh, it can help you get to your answer. Okay, last problem here. So what proportion of ebony offspring should have long wings? So this is telling you, this is kind of like, not a conditional statement, but it's only asking for one thing. So when it's asking for one thing, immediately start thinking branch diagram because you don't have to do an entire Punnett square then. Uh, so we're looking for portion of ebony offspring should have long wings. Okay, what portion of ebony offspring? So ebony have to be Remember, if you go back to the start, ebony offspring have to be little e, little e, have long wings, so long wings, 
you know, that underscore means this could be VG or VG plus if you do the following cross. So this is the cross we're looking at here. So the way I recommend doing this one is use branching. Oops. So branching is a much easier way to look at one particular subset within a population to figure out the result. So here you want to start by doing two monohybrid crosses. So you're looking at first a cross of uh, VG plus VG cross VG VG. So we're doing these monohybrids just to get our you know, probabilities of that forming. So if we do this cross here, write out the gametes. Now I'm just going to write pluses in here. So there's one cross. And then we do the other monohybrid. Now I'm not drawing the slashes here, so make sure you realize that when doing this as well. So this, we see a dihybrid. We know this one's going to be a three to one ratio. Always look, always look for that. All right, so here are our, our little monohybrids. So now we're looking for ebony offspring. So here we can start with ebony. So ebony offspring, either, the only one of these can be ebony offspring. So there's a one fourth chance of ebony offspring. Remember, ebony is the um, recessive form. Remember, always double check. Uh, so ebony is recessive. So only one of these can be ebony. Now remember which ones have long wings. So the long wings here could either be anything, well, anything with a plus is a long wing. So plus VG. Remember this would also, this would be written as uh, VG plus. I just made it easier for inside the Punnett square. So there we have a one half chance. So half of these could have those long wings. So let's build this branch diagram now. And also I want to show it for all of the parts just so we could see it a little better. Uh, so here, if VG plus VG is one half, we know uh, VG, VG is also one half. And also if we look over here, we can look at the other options. So we have three fourths then for, remember we were looking at phenotypes. Um, so three fourths here for, uh, what's that, gray. And you could write ebony there. Um, so these ones would be long wings. These ones would be vestigial and gray and then ebony. So that's how we'll write these branch diagrams. We're looking at phenotypic ratios and I might have enough room down here to show this. Uh, so here, if we're looking at this, let's draw it out. So starting with long wings. So you write one half and I like to write the phenotype there just as a reminder. And now we start the branching. So the first option we have here is ebony. So one quarter ebony or they could be three fourths gray. The other option we have down here is half vestigial. This one could be one fourth ebony, and this is why it's called the branching, or three fourth gray. Now you do this, the branching result, remember it's multiplication, so all of these are multiplying here. So one half times one fourth equals one eighth. This one's one half times three fourths, which is three eighths. This one is one half times one fourth, one eighth again. And then down here we have three eighths. So all of these should add up to the denominator, which is eight. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you know you did it correct. So then these ones here, here are long ebony. Long gray. Oops, don't need that. Uh, vestigial ebony. Oops, ebony. And vestigial gray. So now let's look at our question and what we have here. So what proportion of ebony offspring? So ebony offspring, how do I write a D there? Ebony offspring, these ones 
and these ones. So what portion of the ebony offspring should have long wings? Oh, this should also say flies. Oops, typo. Um, should have long wings. So here we see one eighth of the total population has long wings, okay? So one eighth of all of these, which is fine. However, this is looking at a conditional probability. So what proportion of the ebony offspring so one eighth, two eighths, only two eighths of the total offspring are ebony. And then which proportion of those have long wings? Your answer is one half. So only half of the ebony offspring have long wings. And so that's just showing a conditional probability. Um, and important to you know be able to figure that out so now if you you can add some multiplication and addition rules here too so if i say the chance of all long wings so you're looking at long ebony or long gray so remember or or is the addition rule so you do one eighth plus three eighths so remember if you could be either long ebony or long gray, so that would also equal one half. So you have a half chance of the total population. Here, this is a half chance of only looking at long wings. Uh, so now if we ask it a different way, so what's the chance of, you know, and we use the word and, so a long ebony and a long gray, you would take one eighth times three eighths for that probability. So just make sure you can answer lots of different ways I can ask for an answer in these types of questions. But this one I wanted to show an example of conditional probability looking at a subset of the population. But you can also talk about, you know, either and or either or, which is, you know, multiplication, or saying, oh, either or, which is addition, or saying and, which is multiplication. All right, so that's the example problems I have here. If you have any questions on this or want to see more examples, uh, feel free to reach out to me. But the next one I will make will be on chi-squared. So looking at some of these results and then doing a chi-squared test to figure them out. But with that, I hope you all have a great day and see you next time. Bye-bye.